we live? Hello. Hello. I'm just going to give everyone a few minutes just so that we can get a few more people watching before I get started. How's everyone doing? Hope everyone's having a nice evening and has had a good day. Hi, Jenny. And I'm just going to get this live up on my iPad so I can see the comments while I'm showing you the amazing butterblings which I can't wait. Hi, Amy. Hi, Jan. Hey, Claire. Right, I think we have quite a few people watching now, so I will get on with my introduction. Um, I am Jojo, for those who don't know, and I am really excited to be sharing with you the brand new Light Elegance Butter Blings. Um, I know you're all gonna be really excited to see these different colors and the way that they apply. And I was asked if I wanted to do this live today or if I wanted to do it next Friday when they launch. But I knew that everybody would be really keen to see what they are like in action as soon as they've been announced today. So I was really keen to do it today. So. Are we all excited? Are we looking forward to seeing these new butter blings in action? Nice to see we've got quite a few people watching. Hi, Kerry. Hi, Karina. Okay, so I'm going to switch the camera around. And I do apologise if you can hear fireworks because we have fireworks going off right outside. So hopefully, <laughs> um, you won't just hear. How do I zoom in? Right. Jenny, help me. How do I zoom in? <laughs> Right, so we have the butter blings here. Um, I'm gonna hold them up to you because for some reason I can't seem to zoom in at the minute. Um, and I do have one on my nails to show you. So these are our four brand new butter blings. Um, these are brand, brand new to the collection. So we've never had anything like this before. And I still can't zoom in. <laughs> Help me. Um, so these are different because they are made of premium pigments. So these have premium shimmers and glitters in them, um, which means that we can create much more intense and vibrant metallic and shimmer effects with these compared to our normal buttercreams. So um, I'm just going to get straight in and show you these because you really have to see them to just understand how stunning they really are. So do we have any preferences of which one we're going to see first? Wait for some comments. Jade, people are saying Jade. Should we go for Jade? I'm going to go for Jade first. This is one of my favourites for anyone that knows me. You know that I love the greens. So um, I will show you this one first. So this is Jade. I absolutely love this butter bling. And this one I would say I've actually used the most um, out of all of them. This one is a really, really fine, beautiful metallic green shimmer. It's like emerald green and it is just 
oh, you just want to jump in there. It's like melted green goodness. I absolutely love it. Yeah, lots of people loving this one. It's so gorgeous. And this one is going to be so good in the run up to Christmas. I know we don't really want to talk about it just yet because it feels like it's forever away. But honestly, this one's going to be so good for all your Christmas nails um, because it's going to go with those Christmas sets with that beautiful green. So next one to show you. Um, what are we thinking? We have the blue sapphire, we have the hollow and we have the black opal. What do we want to see next? So I'm going to go for sapphire. Um, this one has quite a similar finish to jade so they are really really fine uh, shimmer pigments and they give almost like a molten metallic look over the nail and this one is kind of i don't want to say turquoise it's like it's like the sea if you had a metallic perfect blue sea i just think this one is absolutely stunning um, I'm just going to wipe off my dotting tool so I can show you how it looks. So you can see it's got that same really, really ultra fine shimmer that Jade has. It's absolutely stunning. I can envisage lots of different combos with this for Christmas with uh, like diamond and any of the silver glitters. Uh, we can really create some lovely snowy festive nails with this one. And I'm just going to jump straight in with hollow after this one. And hollow, as the name would suggest, is a holographic butter bling. And I really hope you can see on the camera, I've kind of struggled to get this in photos, just how holographic and super sparkly this butter bling really is. Um, it is super holographic. It's really, really densely packed, so there's a lot of pigments in here uh, and it gives you a really concentrated um, holographic finish to the nail. Hopefully you can see there as I turn the stylus, you can see all of those holographic pigments. So if you love your holographic glitters, um, this one is going to be right up your alley. Um, I love it. I love all of them. What can I say? But yeah, love, love, love. And then last but definitely, definitely not least, we have Black Opal. And this is my favourite of the whole collection. Um, you can probably guess if you haven't already, this is what I have on my nails at the moment. Um, I just love all of the different colours that run through here. So this has black pieces along with blues and greens and purples. And I would say it's kind of like a chameleon flake in a buttercream. It is absolutely amazing and this is unlike anything else that we have in the line at all of any glitter color buttercream we don't have anything like this um, and hopefully you'll see again even more so as i twist that stylus you can really see all of those colors coming through that base and i find it gives like a two-tone effect so where I've been wearing it on my nails, it um, looks 
kind of two-tone more pinky on one side and green on the other depending on where the light hits but this one's really stunning I, I absolutely love it this one has to be my favorite um, and it looks like you are also all loving the look of that one so now I've kind of introduced the buttercreams to you I'm now going to show you a few uh, tips with the colors on so you can see what they look like on the nails and I really hope you can see because my I've got my lighting uh, as close as I can oh there we go I've managed to zoom in now that's much easier so um, here at the top I have done um, a few tips just with the butter blings. So I wanted to show you what these look like on their own, just painted with nothing underneath them. And the one thing that I've actually really been enjoying with these butter blings is the fact that they are actually really versatile. So you can get really good coverage from them, but we can also paint them quite thinly and apply them over the top of colours as well to change the effect and change the tone of them underneath, which I just think is brilliant because it's kind of um, a bit of an oxymoron to say that it's got really good coverage, but you can apply it over other colours to get a different tone. Um, but these just work so beautifully. So um, you can see here I've got Jade. This is a really, really thin coat. And then here we have more of a, I'd say more of a floated technique over it. So it is still one layer, um, but it's just applied with a little bit of a lighter touch with the brush. And I will show you that shortly. Then we have Sapphire. So again, just a thin layer and then a thicker layer. And then Hollow. Um, I love this in a thin layer because I think you're going to be able to get so much use of this over so many different colours. And then hollow as more of a full glitter effect. Absolutely love that. And then, of course, my favourite, black opal. And black opal is a bit different in that even with applying it a bit more floated, um, there is still a little bit of a clear base there. But I love that because I'm going to show you shortly, you can change the undertone of black opal just depending on what you apply underneath it. And it looks stunning. So here we have Jade and I've applied this over a few different um, colours so that you can see hopefully there is a difference and I've also applied a couple um, with a glitter fade as well um, and I do have listed here what colours I've used underneath. Um, so this one here I've used Made of Money. So if any of you have the Champagne and Caviar collection that came out, this is Made of Money with Jade faded onto it. Then we have um, Pedal Pushers, which is a colour gel uh, with a fade. Then I've applied for this one, I've applied Cleopatra Buttercream, um, which I don't know if you can see in the shot, hopefully. Um, it just makes it a little bit more intense and just deepens the colour slightly. And then last but not least, we have um, I'd Like to Thank the Academy, again with it faded at the end there. Uh, Sapphire, I love this row. <laughs> um, I have used Finding Tranquility underneath Sapphire for this one, which is one of the buttercreams from the Autumn collection. And as you can see, it just really deepens up and completely changes the way that um, the Sapphire looks, but it still looks really full coverage and it's still going to go on super, super thin. So you're not going to add any bulk with this while getting that really intense look on the nail. Um, hopefully you can see there is the Sapphire on its own if I just take this off. Um, and you can see the difference in the colour. And we've got a few just kind of faded. Um, this one here I really love as well. This one's got Belgian blue underneath. Then we have hollow and I really wanted to show you this with a few different colours. So here we've got um, Sitting Pretty in a Penthouse from the um, Champagne and Caviar collection again. This one here, I don't know if it's going to come off on the camera, I think just slightly. This is Lover's Lane Colour Gel. If you don't have Lover's Lane Colour Gel, 
you need it in your life. <laughs> um, it is like a starry black sky and with hollow faded over the top, it looks unbelievable. Um, and then here I have a dark gray under it, which has just deepened it slightly. Um, and then my favorite, um, and I'm just gonna switch the black opal from the top here so that hopefully you can see the difference. So here is black opal on its own. And then here I've applied it over black, which is what I've got on my nails. I've applied black tie underneath. Um, and then um, this one here is Madame Mim, which is one of the new buttercreams uh, that's coming out next Friday as well. Um, Starlet under this one. And I'd like to thank the Academy under this one, which is like a greeny tealy color. I hope that you can see that the tone is different. Um, and I just love this because with those chameleon flakes, you can just change the look so easily um, just by applying a different colour underneath it, which I think is awesome. So here we have a kind of general look at what they look like. And who wants to see how these are going to apply over the nail? Who wants to see how nicely they glide smoothly over the nail. Lots of hearts going on there. So let's get going and show you how amazing these are. Has anyone got any questions about the barblings? Anything that you don't understand or that you're not sure you kind of know the differences between them and the other products? <laughs> Everyone's desperate to see it applied, I can tell. <laughs> right, I am going to put some gloves on now because otherwise you're just going to be staring at my nails. And as much as I love my nails <laughs> with black opal, um, I want you to be able to see the full effect of the butter bling. Um, somebody has asked, are they priced the same as buttercream? Um, I don't know the exact price. Uh, there may be someone in the comments that can help me with that. Um, but I believe they will be slightly high, higher price than regular buttercream um, because of the premium pigments in there. So I am going to go in the same order that I showed them. So I am going to start with... Um, jade. I'm just going to try and twist my light because it's a bit glary. And I'm going to apply my trusty gel polish bling brush, which I love for all colour applications. Um, the one thing I would recommend is keep a separate brush for these butter blings because they have got a really fine pigment in them. Um, and I do find that they get a little bit stuck in the bristles of the brush. So I would just suggest you can see in the camera there that there are little bits of the pigment that have stuck into the bristles. Um, you could just clean your brush out with some clear one step, but I just find it quicker and easier to have a separate um, brush. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> I'm gonna try and come as close as I can for you. Um, and we are gonna apply our butter bling. So same as the buttercream, I'm gonna agitate this to begin with because you can see hopefully um, it doesn't really move. So just like the buttercream, doesn't really move in the pot. Uh, but then as you agitate it with your brush, you can hopefully see it becomes a lot more fluid. And I'm going to apply this in a nice, smooth layer to get that really nice coverage from the product.
And I always finish with any kind of color or glitter application. I like to finish with nice smooth strokes at the end. And it, you can see you've got really full coverage from that. So I will pop that in to cure. So much easier to have a dark, a light and a glitter brush. Yes. <laughs> and now you can have a butter bling brush. <laughs> so I have a separate glitter brush and a separate butter bling brush um, because the, the pigments in the glitters are bigger. So I just, again, find it easier to um, apply. So next up, we're going to have sapphire. And my jade has just come out. Hopefully you can see all of that blitter, the blitter, the blitter. This is my new word. <laughs> the bling from the glitter is what I was trying to say. <laughs> so next up we will have sapphire. Oh, bye, Karina. Hope don't forget to catch up on it once you've um, once you're free. It will be on the Sweet Squared page for you to view later. How do you mark your brushes? I actually mark it with a little bit of the product. Um, this one I haven't actually done yet, but I would normally. Um, so, for instance, my glitter brush. I've just got a blob of glitter on the end of it. It just helps to make it much easier to see where everything is. Ah, that's bad. I think I was getting a bit of glare from my background. That's much, is that better guys with that lighter background? Right, so again, I'm going to agitate my butter bling and then smoothly apply to the nail. How stunning is this colour? And I think this colour is just perfect for not only winter, but this colour is going to take you right in through that spring and summer as well. How stunning is that? I love it. So let's pop that into Cure. Just one coat and then top coat. So we would finish this with super shiny. Um, I'm not going to do that for each one because I want to spend my time showing you the bubblings. But yeah, you would normally um, just one layer and then finish with your super shiny top coat as normal. but you can see how shiny they are um, on their own. So once you've got that super shiny over the top, they are giving you the very best shine that you can get from your finished nail. I was really lucky to see um, a preview of the first kind of testing batches of butter bling when I was over in America in January. And I'm not kidding you. I think when we all saw them, we nearly fell on the floor. Um, <laughs> we, we've been asking for kind of glittery 
butter buttercreams for a while now so when we all saw these we were very very happy shall we say so I'm, I'm very happy to see them finally out and this is hollow um, this one's a little bit different actually this one has got really fine super like the finest holographic glitter you can imagine um, but it's also got really really tiny flakes um, and I don't know if it's going to pick up on the camera but um, it just gives it like another dimension wow it's so holographic if you love your holographic glitters which I know a lot of you do you are going to be in heaven with this one And while that one's in the lamp, I am just going to show you, because I know a lot of you will have Disco um, Glitter Gel. Um, so I just wanted to compare them for you. Um, so here we have Disco, obviously, and then next to it we have Hollow. The main difference for me is that Disco, as fine as Disco is, Hollow is actually much, much finer. So the concentration of the holographic effect is far, far denser than it is with disco um so just depends what kind of effect you want i just kind of show my client and then let them decide but if you love your holographics you're going to want hollow because it gives you that much more intense version very blingy blingy blitter that's my new word <laughs> And that's it come out of the lamp. So as I say, you would finish with super shiny if you were doing this on someone's actual nails. Um, so a lot of questions down below about when these are out. These come out on the 15th of November. So this, that is next uh, Friday. So you only have a week to wait. So last but definitely not least, I'm going to go in with Black Opal. And this one, you're going to see possibly um, that little bit more of a clearer base. It's not as full coverage as the others. But like I say, I actually really like that about it because you can make it what you want. And I had a bit of an obsession <laughs> a few years ago uh, with chameleon flakes. And these, this black opal gives a very, very similar effect. So I love it. And like I say, it's, it's totally different to anything else that we have from Ellie, which is great. What do we think? Are we liking them? Do we think they look flipping awesome? <laughs> are you excited to get your hands on them? Which ones are you going to be getting? Does anyone have any like colours or glitters that they think they want to see these ones next to? Have they got anything in mind that they think things might be similar to? I mean, honestly, I don't think they're that similar to anything, apart from Hollow, which I would say is fairly similar to Disco. It's just more concentrated, which is why I showed you that one. Um, all of them. <laughs> Everyone wants all of them. <laughs> There was one actually I did want to just show you, uh, which I forgot from earlier, um, but purely because it's from the the latest, the Champagne and Caviar collection. Um, so I just wanted to show you Gaudy but Gorgeous next to Jade. So you can see it's got kind of a similar tone, but they are obviously different because this is a chunky glitter gel and this one is a butter bling. But wouldn't they look absolutely amazing in a set together? Um, that's what I'm saying. 
that's the way I'm going to be using them. <laughs> Would love to see black opal over a bright purple. Um, so Starlet, this one here, um, this one here is over Starlet, which is, it's like a bright pinky purple. Um, so it would give a very similar effect to that. Um, it just makes it very much more on the purple side of things. Um, and then this one is Madame Mim, which is the new uh, purple from the buttercream, which is more of a darker purple. So hopefully that gives you kind of an idea. So one of my favorite things about buttercreams, which a lot of you might already know if you follow me on various other um, Instagram, uh, YouTube, all that malarkey, um, you will know that I love buttercreams for nail art and creating effects on the nail. And so I really wanted to show you these as well, um, where I have incorporated the butterblings in with an effect or design. Um, so here we have various ombre effects. Um, ombre is always popular and it's, um, I just thought it'd be really helpful to see it with the butterblings. And also I really wanted to try it out as well to see how they would actually work. Um, the other great thing with the butterblings is because the pigments are so, so fine, we can use them for really fine detail work, which is great because with Christmas coming up, you know, the star designs, you can just go straight in there with something sparkly without having to do like a sugaring technique and it gets a bit messy um, it's all incorporated into the gel which I think is great um, this one here I love I literally did this this afternoon I had a bit of a brainwave and thought oh, I'll give it a go and see if it looks okay and I'm quite pleased with that one um, and then here I've incorporated it into like a mandala type design in those fine lines which I think looks lush if I do say so myself <laughs> And then um, also, you know, the whole candy cane stripes are just so popular at Christmas. So I thought I'd give it a go with that. And also a French as well, because it means that we can create a French on top of the finished nail with a really nice deep smile line. Um, and then when they come back, and this is one of the best things about buttercream is that the filing when they come back is so easy. So if we can apply things like this on the top of the nail and then just file that very top surface off, that's gonna make our lives a lot, lot easier as nail technicians. Um, so is there any of these that you would like to see? I quite fancy maybe doing like a bit of an ombre. Um, is there any kind of arty things that you would like to see um, how these work? If I do an ombre one, what does people want to see? Do you want to see this kind of um, horror, horizontal ombre or more of a vertical ombre? Ombre. Everyone's wanting the ombre. So we'll go for a vertical ombre. Do we have any preference? Because I've actually used two different techniques here. Did you use the butter bling in the one stroke? Um, so guys, for those that don't know, this is one stroke. Um, and that's what I've used to create the petals. I did not use one um, butter bling in the actual one stroke. I've used it to create the really fine lines for the swirls and also a little bit of shimmer in the middle of the flower as well. I've used butter creams for this one, uh, just white and Cleopatra. So I'm gonna show you this one because I think this is the easiest vertical ombre to achieve. Um, you could do this with any of the butter blings um, and I will show you in black opal and hollow. Um, but you can do this with any of them. So you could do jade over the top, you could do sapphire. Um, the choice is completely yours. Um, and maybe once I've put my hollow down, maybe I will actually change it up 
So I'm going to start off with the hollow tip that I've already done because that's going to save us a bit of time and I can show you more. Um, so we have our I'm trying to zoom in a bit more, but it doesn't seem to be on a to uh, play ball with me. So I'm going to start off with the um, hollow butter bling, and I'm going to go over with black opal, which is what I've done on that tip. But like I say, you could really use any of them. Um, but this is a really, really easy way to create a vertical ombre with the butter blings. So I'm agitating the product again. And then I will apply. And I'm just going to kind of float that around. We're imagining this is their cuticle area. And then I can start feathering that down the nail. And I feel like I need a little bit more. You guys will know plastic tips. They just feel like they eat up the product, don't they? And then I'll bring that down. And then what I also like to do when I'm creating a fade is as well as using the flat of the brush, I'll turn my brush so that I'm actually using the side of the brush. And I'll use that to gently fade at the edges and just bring a few more of those pieces down the nail and I just find this gives me a little bit more control and creates more of a fade rather than me just dragging all of that product down to the other end of the nail what do we all think Love it, love it. So as I say, you can do any color combination, but it's super, super easy. I think you will all agree. Looks really effective and it looks like it was really complicated, but it really wasn't. <laughs> so I'm gonna pop that into cure. And I tell you what, because I did have a few comments about the other, the horizontal fade as well. So I will actually show you that one. Um, we've got time, so why not? There's that one set. And I think with the hollow underneath as well, it really brings out the different colours in the black opal. You really see the blues and the greens in there. Is it more difficult with the finer particles? No, I actually think it's easier. I will actually put super shiny over the top of this one because I find it just merges it all together. You can see the finished effect. Right, so I am going to show you next how I created this horizontal ombre. So I've gone from sapphire across to jade. Which also look really nice layered over the top of each other. Um, if you have a look at Jenny's 
um, Instagram or Facebook, Jenny Smith, she has done those two layered on top of each other and that also looks amazing. Um, and because you can uh, apply them thinner to get more of a sparse application, they're actually really easy to layer over the top of each other. So although you've only got four uh, colours, you can actually create loads of different effects um, just with these four. <laughs> Kerry, I need to rob a bank. <laughs> I don't recommend robbing a bank. <laughs> it's not, I, I would say maybe it's not worth robbing a bank, but <laughs> it is worth, it is going to be worth the extra pounds. I can promise you that. So for this horizontal ombre, I'm going to start by applying my sapphire on one side. And for this type of ombre, I do like to do it in thin layers. So I do like to apply, say, two to three layers rather than one, because I just find that the blend is much more seamless um, than if you're trying to apply loads of product all at once. So... Just smooth in that right over the nail. Wipe my brush off clean. And keep it nice and flat. So you can see I've got it into a really nice flat um, shape. And then I'm keeping my brush really flat against the nail. So it's, it's nice and smooth over that surface. I'm not going to get any streak marks from the bristles. And I'm going to start from the top and come down the center and move across to one side. I'm going into the green first and then come across into the blue. Okay, so it will look a bit patchy on the first layer, but don't panic because all will be rectified in the next layers so I'm going to pop that into set and the curing times for these guys are exactly the same as your butter creams so 30 seconds in your LED um, light elegance dot lamp uh, so no change there so just stick to your regular time in for those even though they're rammed full of pigment they still cure really really well So that's the first layer set and with my clean brush I'm going to come into sapphire and apply that again over that left half of the nail and this layer I can apply so it gives me a little bit more coverage and then depending on how the blend goes I'll decide if I'm going to do a third layer. So apply on that right side across to the middle. And then once I've cleaned my brush off, I can do the same movement as I did before. So start in the middle, nice smooth stroke down the middle and then across to the green, back across to the middle and then across to the blue and then back to the middle. And can you see, it just transitions really seamlessly between the blue and the green. I love this kind of ombre, because it's actually dead easy, um, but it looks really, really effective, especially with that amazing shimmer and sparkle for it. Right, what else would you like to see? I 
I did see someone mentioned about a French. Is that someone you want to see? Or do you want to see more of the arty ones? You make it look easy. It is easy, I promise. <laughs> fine detail okay looks like we're going to go fine detail I think love the stars this stuff would be an awesome galaxy design okay okay everyone's kind of wanting everything <laughs> So I think what I would like to do is ombre French. To be honest, ombre, the way that I did this one, the way that I faded the, fret, the glitter on top like that, is exactly how you would do it if you were doing like a, a glitter French ombre. It's really just like a glitter fade on the top of the finished nail. Um, Okay, so there's a lot of requests for this one in the middle. So, let me get my bits together. And also for this one, for the, the fine stars. So I think I will start with this one. And then if we've got time, I'll go on and do the one stroke. If not, I can show you like the swirly bit so you can see how uh, the fine lines look. Um, but hopefully we will have time. Um, so I'm gonna show you this one first and I'm gonna be a bit sneaky. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you using one of the new butter creams. So uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> um, cause I actually use Madame Mim for this particular nail. So I'm gonna use Madame Mim for uh, the demo nail as well. The lid wants to come off. So um, this isn't a butter bling, this is one of the new butter creams um, that I believe Fee and Kirsty are gonna be doing a live on next Thursday. Um, but I'm gonna use this as my base color. So uh, you get a little sneaky extra in here as well. Rachel said I'm naughty. <laughs> I can't help it. It's so nice. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to agitate this one and apply this to my tip. And you know what, it's funny because I have been loving this colour and I know it's got a really, really nice shimmer in it, but it was only when I watched the Light Elegance YouTube video earlier today that I realised that it actually has pink glitter in it. And I never realised that now I'm painting it, I'm thinking, of course it has. It's really obviously pink glitter in there, but it's um, stunning. So that can go in and cure. So as I say, 30 seconds uh, cure time in the Light Elegance dot lamp. Um, so that is in there. And then I'm gonna use Hollow to create my stars. And I'm gonna use the Selena Ryden stripey brush, if I can find my stripey brush. Um, and my stripey brush <laughs> is a little bit bent. <laughs> He's had a bit of an accident, but I still love him. So um, I still use him. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna dip. Make sure that you really squeeze your brush together so that you've got a really nice uh, fine point to your brush. 
um, and then you can dip into the bubbling and then as I draw it out I like to draw it up against the edge of the jar this just helps the the gel to kind of go through those bristles and then when I'm ready to actually apply it just glides much more easily and then I'm going to dip in and I'm going to start my stars And really just letting the brush do the work for me. And I'll do another one down here. Hopefully you can see that you get really good coverage. Once I've got kind of the main crosses on there, I'll just flash cure that so that they don't move. Because there's nothing worse, not necessarily move, but just um, as you're then applying the diagonal strokes, you don't want to be pulling all of that product out of place. And then come across for the diagonal ones. So that's just some fine stars on there. Um, and I'm gonna show you the one stroke design because everyone seems to be commenting <laughs> about the one stroke design. So let's just do it. Let's do it. So for the one stroke design, which is this one here, I have used um, Cleopatra buttercream and I've used just white buttercream along with jade butter bling. Love the look of these products but can I ask are they HEMA free? Yes 100%. Um, I am personally allergic to um, HEMA and HPMA and I can use all of the Light Elegance products. Um, they are all formulated with out ingredients that are known to cause common reactions. So you can 100% put your trust into Light Elegance and their products um, that they formulate everything to the safest and highest standard. Um, I almost had to give up doing nails um, and Light Elegance basically saved my career. <laughs> um, I wouldn't have been able to carry on my work in the way that I do without them. So I am forever grateful for that. So I am going to start with a layer of Cleopatra. And I'm just going to apply that all the way over that tip. It looks like I'm using a lot, but it's just because I'm using a tip and we all know how much the tips eat up. On a natural nail, you only need a very small amount. So that will go into set. And then over the top of that, and this is probably like the most crucial part of um, doing the one stroke nail art, is having a matte surface for the one stroke to go on top of. So over the top of this nail, I'm going to apply flat matte, um, which is the Light Elegance Matte Finish Top Coat. 
and I'm just going to apply this over the top. Um, this cures for one minute in our LED dot lamp. And just apply that over. Is there any other green lovers out there? Because I feel like me and Fee are the green lovers. <laughs> go in to set so that's one minute in there thank you made my day yeah good <laughs> i hope you enjoy trying light elegance because honestly um although they are hema free hpma free there's kind of a misconception that sometimes these products don't perform as well but they perform amazing as well as being super safe for all of us Yay, more green lovers. <laughs> Wish more customers would try it. Do you know what? The best thing for green nails, to get your customers wearing green nails, is to wear green nails. Because whenever I wear green nails, I do nothing but green nails. <laughs> I think it's a colour that some people are a bit scared of, but um, once they see it on your nails and they realise how wearable it is and how nice it looks, they're more likely to give it a go. So, um, does it need to be matte before one stroke? Yes, 100%. Um, I have tried finishing with Super Shiny and then buffing it to a matte finish, but it just doesn't work as well. Um, because the difference is if you buff it matte, you do get those micro microscopic um, kind of scratches through the top surface. And then when you, when you then apply your one stroke, the color is inclined to enhance those microscopic uh, scratches in the surface of the nail. Uh, whereas with the flat matte, it gives you a really smooth matte surface so when you apply one stroke over the top it just glides over the top surface of the nail so for me it's a bit of a must-have and it is a really good matte top coat it's super clear i know some matte top coats can be a little bit discolored this one isn't at all um, so it's well worth having in your stash So for one stroke, I need to grab a form. You can use um, a tile or a palette, whatever it is that you use to uh, kind of decant product out onto. And I'm gonna use, as I say, Cleopatra and just white. And then with my dotting tool, my stylus, I'm going to take a bit of white. So again, it's really, really important and it is key to this technique that we really agitate this product and get it really smooth and flowing. Um, otherwise, the colours just don't blend very well together. Whatever's on the stylus, I will just roll that off onto the form. Pop that one away, I don't need that now. Um, give your stylus a wipe, get rid of that white. And then with Cleopatra, give that an agitate as well. And then again, what is on that stylus we can roll off onto the form whatever i don't use on there i can just scrape back into the pot um, so there is no wastage okay so what we need for the one stroke technique is a flat brush um, so I am using the number four flat brush from Light Elegance, of course, um, and it is a super flat brush. Um, this one is quite large, so it's fine if you're working on nail tips or if you're working on someone with quite large nails. Um, but if you do have someone with smaller nails, you will need a smaller 
um, flat edged brush. So I am going to dip one side of my brush into the white. So you can see that I've dipped into there and then dip into the green with the other half of the brush. And then on the back of my hand onto the glove. So it's really important that you wear a glove. We don't want to be doing this on the back of our hand. Um, I'm just going to do some little strokes. And this is where we start blending our colours. So you'll see I'll have, I've done it one way and then I've flipped the brush over and I've done the same again over the same area. Then I'm going to pick up a bit more product and do the same again and just kind of very slightly going back and forth so that hopefully you can see those colours in the middle are starting to merge and blend together. And again, I like to do this three times. I find that three times gives me a nice amount of product on my brush. And then last off, I'm going to press down into that gel and pull up. And what that does is it kind of loads my brush up as I push down the bristles of the brush fan out and pull the product into the brush so that then when I start working on the nail, it's going to flow down out of the bristles and onto the nail. So we have our nail here and I'm going to start with the main petal. So pick your position. Um, I'm going to pick kind of the top corner or you can do the bottom corner whatever kind of depends what look you're going for. And I'm going to start with one side of the petal and with very little pressure, I'm just going to smooth that brush onto the surface of the nail. And by pushing up and then letting the brush come down, it gives me those contours in the petal. So we've got one petal there and this is going to be layered. So I'm not worried about whether the white looks perfect coverage or if it looks a bit streaky at this point. This is my first layer, which is just going to be my guide as to where the second layer goes. Before I do that next petal, because I have to change my brush. So on these petals, I have got the brush angled away from me. And now I'm going to flip it over. I'm just going to go back into my colours and then back onto the nail. Just leaving a little gap between the petals. Pushing up and letting those brush strokes create the contours in the petals. So I'm going to set that into cure. I'm just going to cure that for 30 seconds. Does anyone have any questions? Got some hearts going on, so that's good. <laughs> so I can bring that back out again. And I'm going to go back into my colour. And again, load my brush up and then go back over these petals. And now we're going to build up the coverage. So again, some nice light pressure and just smooth the brush over those petals. And we're just following the shape that we've created with that first application. So your second application should be fairly easy because you're really just following where you've applied this the first layer um, and if you've made a little bit of a mistake in the first layer you can also correct it in this second layer as well so if you had a little bit where you maybe had a gap at the top here where the white is you can just fill that in with your second layer 
So that's my second layer. And I'm going to pop it into the lamp again. And I'm going to do three layers in total to give me the best coverage and the best blend between the colours. You make it look easy. It, it's, uh, it takes a little practice, this one. Um, I can't lie. <laughs> um, and it took me a long time to figure out how to do it with the Light Elegance gels. Um, I tried before buttercreams came out and it was just not working out for me at all. I know some people use the gel paints, but I just couldn't get it to work for me. Um, and then when buttercreams came out and I discovered how good they were for nail art, I just knew, I just had to persevere and just figure out if there was a way that I could make it work. Um, and perseverance and practice and uh, we got there. Um, if you if you really want to do something and you set your mind to it, you can do it. You just got to put the time into practicing. So third layer now. So this is my last layer. And this is going to give us really good coverage. Especially in the white. and just perfect that blend as well. Hopefully you can see in the camera what a difference that third layer makes. It really does just bring it all to life and everything looks a lot more vibrant. So that can go in. And I am going to set that for 30 seconds. So I'm gonna wipe my brush off and get rid of this glove because otherwise I will spread it all over myself. And as I said, I'm not gonna waste this uh, buttercream that I've got on here. So I'm gonna use my spatula and scoop it up and put it back in the pot. Anyone that knows me knows I hate waste. <laughs> so um, <laughs> anything that I can do to get the most out of product is good with me. So now we've done the one stroke, we can go into the uh, detailing and the butter bling for the swirls and the middle of the flower. So I'm gonna finish with flat matte. Um, you don't have to finish with flat matte, you can finish with super shiny. I just think by finishing with flat matte, it makes the details stand out even more. Um, and hopefully you'll see as well with that top coat, it just smooths the blend between those colours. So if your blend looks pretty good anyway, when you put your top coat on, it's going to be even smoother. And that's going to go into set for one minute. So I can get rid of this form now before I make a mess again. And I am going to use Jade for the details. And I need my block brush, which again is from the Selena Riding Kit. Um, it's just a really, really small oval brush, like a super, super mini, hopefully you can see mine next to my nail, I'll show you next to my baby nail. It's so tiny, it's so cute. So I'm gonna use that. And I am going to use Stripey, which is what I used for the stars of the previous nail. So that's finished curing now and I can remove the sticky layer. So remove that inhibition layer with the cleanser and then we're ready to go in with all of our details. So 
Oh, hi, Mandy. I missed you. I didn't see you earlier. So for the middle of the flower, I am going to apply a bit of jade. Um, so I'm just actually going to use what's in the lid because I'm going to get way too much on my brush if I take it from the pot. So I'm just going to take a little bit of jade from the lid and then just blob it in the middle. And that's about as technical as we get for the middle of the nail. And I, I don't want it to be a circle because I don't want it to look too perfect. If you look at a flower, the middle of the flower is not a circle. Um, so to make it look more realistic, I like to make it a little bit more of a random shape. So you can see it is not a circle. Um, I'm just going to flash cure that so that I don't uh, move it as I apply other things. And I can put that brush away now. And the next thing that I'm going to do is the swirls. And I'm going to use my stripey brush. I know we obviously have the swirly brush, um, but I actually really like stripey for swirls as well. Um, I think because it's a bit more of a longer um, length of brush, I, I just much prefer it. Um, what do you clean your brushes with? Um, just a dry wipe. I never use any cleanser. Um, if you use cleanser on your brushes, you will decrease the life of the brush. So um, just on a clean uh, wipe. Clean, dry wipe. So again, similar to how I did earlier, I'm just going to take my brush through the butter bling. And this we're going to get much, much finer because the particles in jade are super, super fine. And to begin my swirls, I like to do the outside line first. So this line here, this outside line is the one I'm going to do first. Starting at the edge of the flower and then coming round to create that. I mean, you can see how fine you can get that. Super, super fine. And then come back in and I can do the middle of my swirl and also do a little bit here as well, just to carry that through. I like to do a little bit more in the middle. I just think it adds a bit more detail and just finishes the swirl off. And then one at the top here as well. The main thing with lines is don't rush. If you move your brush really quickly, um, it just ends up a bit of a mess. So just take it steady. So you can see you've got that really fine line details, but the really stunning pigments from the, the butter bling are really shining through. And especially on that matte background, it stands out really well. So I'm going to pop that in to cure before I do my white detailing. Um, and something I wanted to point out actually is the buttercreams, you can actually do kind of 3D effects, uh, like raised nail art. And I just thought, well, I'm gonna try it with Jade, uh, with the Butter Bling as well. So that's what gave me the idea to try it here with these swirls. Um, so I've actually, I've not top coated. Um, so once I finish this nail, you'll see I won't top coat again, um, 
but we don't need to. Um, we can leave it with its own. I wouldn't recommend it for a full colour, um, but as nail art for a detail, we can certainly leave it without a top coat. Um, for the really fine detail around the edge of the petals, I don't know whether you can see on this one, we've got really fine line detailing at the top. Um, I use the really, really tiny shorty brush. This is super, super small. Um, and I will just dip into, I actually want the thicker part of the product. So get right into that area where the product isn't moving because we do want to create um, a bit of a 3D effect with this. And I'm just going to use this to lightly contour the top. The reason I don't top coat after this step is because it will flatten all of that dimension that I'm now creating by applying it on the top. It just merges everything together and you lose the dimension. Okay, so I'm gonna put that into cure. The key at this stage, if you're not applying a top coat, is to cure this for longer than what you normally would. So we would normally cure for 30 seconds. I would actually cure for two minutes. And that way you're gonna get almost a tack-free finish on the white. And in fact, it will probably be pretty much tack-free on the white. Um, the butter blings do still have a sticky layer. Um, so I have tried this and they do still have a sticky layer, but once you've removed the inhibition layer, it, it still has a really nice high shine finish and um, it still works really well. So I don't see that being an issue. Um, if you've got someone that's super heavy handed, maybe you might have someone come back with an issue, but I haven't experienced any. I've done one stroke on a number of clients and I always do my detailing on top of the finished top coat, whether that be super shiny or flat matte, and I never have any issue. So um, just make sure that you cure it for two minutes. Um, so use the 60 second button on the LED dot and then use the 60 button again for the extra minute. So we have been on here now for an hour and 20 minutes and here I was worrying that I was even going to fill an hour. <laughs> um, so we are getting ready to kind of wrap this up. Um, does anyone have any other questions uh, before we finish up? Do we want to see like a last view of the amazing butter blings? And who's going to be on <laughs> Sweet Squared next Friday <laughs> ordering these beauties? <laughs> How gorgeous. And I will just show you the finished nail. So this is all fully cured and ready for your client to uh, go home wearing. Um, you can also add some little white dots if you want around the middle. Um, so I did on this one where I just added a few little white pollens, um, or you can keep it really simple just with the glitter. The choice is yours.
Um, I don't know the exact price, unfortunately. Um, someone from Sweet Squared might be able to comment um, and let you know. They will be more expensive than buttercreams um, because the pigments in them are much more expensive for Light Elegance to uh, purchase. So therefore it is gonna be a little bit more for us to buy. Um, but these little pots, don't let them deceive you. You will get around about 40 applications from these. So um, they are well worth it. And Light Elegance are actually advising us that we charge extra. So these are premium products. We're paying a premium for them. So therefore our clients should also pay a premium. So um, I really hope you have enjoyed the last hour and 20 minutes with me, uh, listening to my rambly voice. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I look forward to coming back and reading through all the comments because I know I've missed quite a few as I've been um, working away. So I'll have a read through uh, once I've driven home and come back to those of you that I missed. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me for my first live and I will see you hopefully very soon um, and enjoy your butter blings. Tag me in your photos. I'd really like to see your creations because they're just stunning and I just know you're going to absolutely love them. So um, I will speak to you soon, guys, and thank you so much for joining me. Bye.